In this video, we're going to work on problems associated with the visible light spectrum. So let's start with this one. Which of the following colors of light have the longest wavelength? Would you say it's red, blue, yellow, or green light? Well, first, you need to be familiar with the visible light spectrum. First, we have infrared, which is not part of the visible light spectrum. And then there's red light. After red light, you have orange. Think of the colors in a rainbow. After orange, it changes to yellow. And then from yellow, we go to green. And then from green, blue. And then after blue, it goes violet. And after violet, we have ultraviolet. So these colors represent the colors of light that's part of the visible light spectrum. Now let's talk about wavelength. The wavelength increases towards the left. So infrared radiation has a longer wavelength than any of the colors of visible light. So the wavelength goes up as you move towards the left. The frequency goes up as you move towards the right. So the answer to this question is red light. Red light has the longest wavelength of all the four colors listed here. Now let's move on to number two. Which of the following colors of light will have a wavelength of 690 nanometers. Now the answer choice is still the same, but the question is a little different. Is it red, blue, green, or yellow light? What would you say? Around 700 nanometers, that's the boundary between infrared radiation and red light. 400 nanometers, it separates a violet light from UV radiation. So the visible light spectrum is very narrow. It's between 400 and 700 nanometers. Now the boundary between purple and blue, that's around 450. Between blue and green, close to 500. Now these values aren't exact, but they're ballpark figures. 570 separates yellow and green and 620 between yellow and orange. I mean, that was 590. 620 is between red and orange. So if we have a wavelength of 690, we're dealing with a photon of red light. If we had the wavelength of 550, we would be dealing with a photon of green light. So A is the answer for this problem. So as you can see, the wavelength increases towards the left, towards infrared radiation. Frequency increases towards ultraviolet radiation. Number three, which of the following colors of light have the highest frequency? So based on the last problem, we know that frequency increases towards the right. So it's not going to be red light. It's not going to be yellow light or green light. So out of the four choices that we have, blue light is going to be, it's going to have the highest frequency. So the answer is B. Now let's move on to the next problem. A photon of blue light has a wavelength of 460 nanometers. What is the frequency of this photon? So to calculate frequency, we need to use this formula. C is equal to lambda times F. C is the speed of light. Lambda is the wavelength in meters. F is the frequency. So to get F by itself, we need to divide both sides by lambda. So the frequency 
is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. The speed of light, or the speed of any type of electromagnetic wave, is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The wavelength is 460 nanometers, but that doesn't match the unit meters in the number above, so we need to convert nanometers to meters. One nanometer is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, so you could simply write 460 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. So now the unit meters will cancel, and we're going to get the frequency in units of 1 over seconds, which is equivalent to 1 hertz. So 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 460 times 10 to the negative 9. This is going to be 6.52 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Kilo is 10 to the 3rd. Mega is 10 to the 6. Giga is 10 to the 9. Terra is 10 to the 12. So if you move the decimal two units to the right, this will become 652 times 10 to the 12 hertz. So that's 652 terahertz. So that's the kind of frequency that you're dealing with when you're dealing with visible light. You're dealing with frequencies in the terahertz range. And just to put things in perspective, think of the old-fashioned radios that we used to have, like an FM radio. The frequency varied between 88 and 108 megahertz. Mega is 10 to the 6, Terra is 10 to the 12. So the frequency of visible light is on the order of a million times greater than the frequency of an FM radio station. Now let's move on to part B. How much energy does it have? So how much energy does this particular photon of blue light with a wavelength of 460 nanometers have? To calculate the energy, we could use this formula. The energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. So the energy is directly proportional to the frequency of the photon. Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. And then we can multiply that by the frequency, which is 652 terahertz, or 652 times 10 to the 12 hertz, or 1 over seconds. So the unit seconds will cancel, and we're going to get the energy in joules. So this is going to be 4.32 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So that is the energy of this single photon. Now let's calculate the energy in units of electron volts. One electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So all we need to do is we need to divide these two numbers. So if you take 4.32 and divide it by 1.6, you're going to get 2.7. So the energy of this photon is 2.7. Now the 10 to the negative 19 these will cancel. So it's simply 2.7 electron volts. So think about what this means. This photon of blue light, this photon with a wavelength of 460 nanometers, has the same energy as an electron with a potential difference of 2.7 volts. That's what it means. Now this value has other implications. This also means that you can't power a blue LED light with a 1.5 volt battery. You need more voltage than that. The minimum theoretical voltage needed for an electron to produce a photon of blue light is 2.7 volts. It can be higher than that, but the minimum 
the floor is 2.7 volts. So a single 1.5 volt battery can't power a blue LED. You need about two of those to make that work. So I decided to go to Amazon and look up the specs for a blue LED light. And you can see it here. So for a blue LED between around 460 to 465 nanometers, notice the operating voltage. It's around 3 to 3.2 volts. So it's above 2.7. It can't be below 2.7. But notice for a red LED with a wavelength of around 620, 625, the voltage is between 2 and 2.2 volts. So let's calculate how much electron volts correspond to red light with a wavelength of 625 nanometers. Let's see if it's below 2.2 electron volts. So first let's write the formula. We know that E is equal to HF and F is equal to the speed of light divided by lambda. So replace an F with this we can get the energy directly from the wavelength. Now this formula will give us the energy in joules. If we divide it by 1.6 times 10 to negative 19, we'll get the energy in electron volts. So we could say that the energy in electron volts will be HC divided by 1.6 times 10 to negative 19, and then times the wavelength. So if we take Planck's constant, multiply it by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divide that by this number. This is joules per electron volts. So lowercase e, capital V, and then times the wavelength, which we're going to use 625 times 10 to the negative nine meters. A red photon could be anywhere between 620 and 700 nanometers. There's a range for it. Meters will cancel. Seconds and one over seconds will cancel. Joules will cancel and we'll get the unit in electron volts. So let's go ahead and plug this in. So the energy is 1.9879 or 1.99 electron volts. So you need a minimum of two electron volts or approximately two electron volts to power a red LED. So hopefully these equations help you to see the relationship between light, frequency, wavelength, and energy.